Good afternoon and welcome to Route 66 News. I'm Lucas Barrett, your news anchor, and our top story today is about a young boy who overcome all the odds and still got the victory. But first, we go to Maddie with what's happening near you. Thanks, Lucas. In today's local news, there was a man who bought six feet long sandwiches to keep his wife six feet away. Now, there was a seagull who attacked, and his wife just laughed and said, well, that's what you get, James. That's all for today. Thanks. Back to Lucas. <laughs> Thanks, Maddie. I sure do hope that man finds all his sandwiches. Now, on to Kitty with our competition corner. Thanks, Lucas. We here at Rousey 6 News want to get our local kids involved in our station, so we put together a competition. I have a bowl of candy here, and the first one to guess how many pieces of candy are in the bowl will win a $5 gift card to a place of their choosing. Now, here are the rules. You guess by leaving a comment on this video. <clears throat> if you don't know how, ask your parents. You can only guess once per, per kid, and you have to have your name with your guess. If you don't follow these rules, you can't win. You have until Wednesday to have your guess in, and we will announce it in next week's videos. I can't wait to see who wins. Back to you, Lucas. That's awesome, Katie. And I hope you all get involved in our competition this week. We're going to be doing some different competitions throughout this time, and we really want you all to get involved. Now, on to another segment we call Simple Science. Thanks, Lucas. Today we'll be making a galaxy in a jar. As you can see, we've made one here earlier. And um, if you'll love to do this at home, of course, you'll need your parents. Now, what you'll need is a empty jar, some water, paint colors of any color you would like, cotton balls, something to start with, and glitter. Nick, and of course, your parents. All right, the first step we're gonna do is we're gonna fill our jar three-fourths with water. Then step number two, you're gonna pick your paint colors. So we're gonna do blue. And we'll put some in. Get there. And then you're just gonna stir it together with whatever you have beside you. All right, now if you wanna put glitter in it, you can go ahead and put your glitter in and just stir that together as well. Once you do that, what you're gonna do next is you're gonna take your cotton balls and you're just gonna kinda pull them apart to make them look like clouds. And you're just gonna put them in and press them down. With our tiny jars, we usually do about three to four. All right, next step is to put more water. So little bit more and then your second color of paint and stir that together but don't go past the cotton ball and if you want you can add more glitter into it and then four more cotton balls Then once you put your cotton balls, we're going to place a little bit more water in it just to fill up the rest of your jar <clears throat> and your third color. You can place three or two more cotton balls at the top just to give it a finished look. And once you put your cotton balls in and you've pushed them in the water, you can take whatever you're using and just press down in between the bottle or the jar and your cotton balls so all your colors mix around and close your lid and there you have it you have a galaxy in a jar and that's what we like to call simply science Back to you, Lucas. Whoa, what a cool experiment. That's really cool. I actually want one for myself. 
Now, if you do the experiment, please send us your pictures on Facebook at HBC Junior Church or on Instagram at HBC underscore junior underscore church on Instagram. And we would love to see your videos or even pictures. In fact, if you comment them, some of them next week we're going to put in our video and show them off to everybody. How cool would that be? Now, I'm going to link both of those in the description below. Thank you again for showing us your pictures and your videos. Now on to our top story. Today in our road trip throughout the Bible, we're going to come to 1 Samuel chapter 17. And I encourage you to pause uh, the video and grab your Bible. I'm going to grab mine from my desk. We're going to learn about the story of David and Goliath. But I want to start off by telling you a little bit about Goliath and David. We're going to start in verse 4. 1 Samuel 17, verse 4. And this is, And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines, named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. He was nine foot and nine inches. He was a giant. He was the tallest one around. He was big, he was mean, and he was scary. Not at all like David. In fact, if you look at uh, verse 14, it says, And David was the youngest. He was the youngest of his brothers, and he was also the smallest, the youngest and the smallest. So he wasn't big, he didn't look that mean, and he looked pretty harmless. He didn't look scary at all. But Goliath was scary, David wasn't. In fact, Goliath was so scary that everyone had been frozen scared. Uh, in 1 Samuel 17, verse uh, 26, um, we just got done with Goliath being there for 40 days, challenging the Israelites, come fight me, come fight me. And finally, David spoke up to the men in uh, verse 26 and stood by him saying, What shall be done to a man that killeth the Philistine, that taketh away the reproach from Israel? What shall be done for, uh, to him? He said, you know what, hey, someone should go fight him. He's an uncircumcised Philistine and should defy the armies of the living God. He defied God and God's people. Someone should fight him. Everybody else was frozen scared, but scared frozen, and David wasn't. David uh, did more than speak up. He also stood up. He would fight Goliath. In verse 32, And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him, that thy servant will go and fight with the Philistine. He went to the king. He prepared himself and went to the king. And said, King, I'll fight this man, not because I'm big, not because I'm the, the, the strongest, but because I believe God, and God's going to take care of me. David knew that this battle was God's fight and God's victory. Uh, and David let God work through him. Uh, if you go down to verse 45 to 47, And then da said David the Philistine, to the Philistine with a spear and with a shield, or I'm sorry, then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, and I come to thee in the name of the Lord of the hosts of God and of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand, and I will smite thee and take thy head from thee, and I will give thy carcass to the host of the Philistines. This day to the fowls of the air and the wind of the beasts of the earth, and the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. He, the Lord saith not with sword and spear, but that the battle is the Lord's. The battle, it says that in verse 47, the battle was the Lord's. And David knew that from the very beginning. It wasn't his fight. It wasn't the, the boast or him. It was to, to honor God. And that's what David did. He fought the giant. He fought what was in his path because it was going to honor God. And because that was dishonoring God, and he stood up against it. There may be things in our lives that seem pretty big, maybe even seem like giants, but we can win if we trust God, uh, as long as it's in the right thing, as long as it's doing the right thing, you know, honoring God, not being sinful, not doing it for ourselves, but to maybe to save someone else, maybe to, to help someone else, or maybe it's just to honor God and what his book has already told us. There's going to be things that come up in our life that are hard to get over. Like today's time, there's a lot of hard things to go through right now, but God's going to carry us through it. Now, he's going to carry us through the battle. It doesn't mean that we won't have to fight the battle. David prepared himself. He gathered the stones, he, he went to the king, and he went to the fight. He prepared himself for the fight, and then he went to the fight. We are going to have to fight. We're going to have to stand up for God. Uh, not that God needs us to do it for him, but that he trusts us in he wants to use me and you. He trusts us. 
and he wants to use us. Uh, he loves us, uh, and he wants to use us. And if we trust him, he'll give us the victory. If we'll let him use us, he'll give us the victory over anything in our life, over obeying our parents, whether it's going through a hard time right now, whatever it may be, God's promise that he'll give us the victory if we'll trust him. Now, I said David prepared. So how do we prepare? Well, number one, it's by reading your Bible. We've got to read our Bible each and every day. And number two, it's by prayer. We must be in prayer and we must be reading our Bible every single day. That's how we prepare for every giant that we're going to come up against. And if you want to prepare and if you want to be like David, prepare and give the victory to Christ and let God fight your Bible battles, that means you got to be reading your Bible. That means you got to be praying because you got to have that relationship so that he'll fight that battle for you. you got to know him as your Savior, too. If you don't know him as your Savior, comment on the video, reach out to me, and I'd love to talk to you and to tell you how you can know the Lord as your Savior. And that's all we have today on our top story. Thank you very much. Well, thank you for tuning in to Route 66 this afternoon. I am Lucas Barrett, your news anchor. I'm Katie Hardy. I'm Madison Russell. And we're your everything else. And that's the news from Route 66.